12th of March 2004. I'm just starting my trip off to the patch from Belan. This is Belan Station. That's sunrise, I think, starting down there. I don't know. Anyway. Hard to see at the moment, but somebody certainly has been here and off. Got on the grass for me. stuff cut down. That's brilliant. Yeah, I can do my BD spray and roll the section and we have half the egg egg rich ready. Good morning is here now. train to Melbourne, then we take a train to Palmgrove, then we take a bus, then we have a walk. Three hours to get there. I would say. To the pub to get the patch. Oh, we're at Belgrave Station now. And we'll be off the bus in a second.
speed. Uh, hit down here. My bird territory. Well, we don't know why, but wonderful stuff. My bird territory. Well, we don't know why, but wonderful stuff. I will feature check there, I think. Shows itself so straight on the map, of course. We'll go back. Having failed to find the walking track, we're now back on the main road. Which we just read. Nice little driveway. We're still continuing down here. This bluebell court. Now that's a nice market garden out there, isn't it? Light on. That's better. Very close. Nice big house. Interesting garage. Logs all together. And this is two story. Dutch Quaker type house, Dutch barn house. All these trees. Very good lawns. Oh, okay. This is where. We could see before all these things. I put the water all the way around there. Eh? A nasty looking ants around here. Very nasty. I would say that's out its corner coming up. And this is Portman Road, which is the road we need to take. So it's over here. It's out its corner. 
That's the Friars Road, to the Priory probably. I don't know really. Being the operative word. Uh, safe room for number two, Portman Road. Gregor. This is forestage. This should be the forest. This house I did before, I think. Like where I'm coming to. So it's a little bit in. Which may be a truce. Seeds or something? Or? No, I've just come from the land from the park. Yeah. Alpacas and nut grows. He hasn't got alpacas. So this is it just in here. Uh, there he is. Okay, there he is. There waiting for me. I'll just drop you. This is a sequoia tree. Californian redwood growing up there. And now we're about to go down to the hazelnut area. Let's see what we've got. These are some of the trees. Oh, I see what he means by the suckers now. These are all suckers growing up around the tree, the base of the tree. And that's how it grows. So, well, they spread out to 15 feet or so. Wonderful windbreak. About 10 feet apart. His new house. Feet. They are. Uh, you grow like a hedge. Really, what are you producing? Reach the lake. This is the other tree. Oh, 
how they are when they're very young. They start growing. These are the hazelnuts. Yeah, that's a very thick woody bush. Well, that should be a very good boundary for the property. All of that. Oh, those dogs, that side all needs pruning. This side has been pruned and thinned up. So he's talking about each five years you've got to prune everything. All the stuff moving up here. No, these are the blackberries, I think. Yes, they are too. That's what's been killed, the blackberries. That's what he said he's busy killing. Okay. Oh, I understand where we are. Chestnut tree up there. There's a few of those around. Now, there aren't any flies and things like that around here. Well, that's interesting. Chestnut tree. Oh, that's on there. Oh, those are all chestnut trees, then. the big ones. Now this chestnut's been pruned quite severely. What has to be done with trees? I still have my trees that are up there. Apple spot. These are suckers that have been put onto the old stump to try and grow something else. So I wonder what we'll get out of that. Yeah. Very nice spot. I may as well, while I'm down, look, I've been trying to get down here all week to check it. For the first time, I believe, for the first mm -hmm. time in, in living memory. I wondered what were you were doing attaching these oh, things okay, to. Here, you wouldn't believe it, this tree here, Yeah. I think it was two years ago, we did a series of graphs around the tree, like it's like putting yeah. candles around a cake between the bark and the and the wood of the tree. This is one here. This is the only successful graph that's appeared on this. Oh, I see that one okay? there. Yeah. This one here, and all the others have not taken. Now I, I did an experiment this year. We did it a lot later. Yeah than we did earlier because last time they seemed to be drowning in water. The ones that didn't survive mm. were very, very wet when I pulled them out. Right. So I didn't use a kind of beeswax compound around here. I just used a... This is a tree wound dressing that we get from northern New South Wales. Ah, okay. Yep. Which is superb. So there's a tree there with total failures. Yep. And we don't know at this stage whether, but it possibly is a genetic rejection if you like there are some mm. genetic in the dna code there are probably some species that do not graft well to other species okay that tree there is a decopy tree a what okay a de that's a decopy chestnut these are oh, the okay. easy peeling oh the ones you were talking about the yeah. ones that we're now yeah. roasting in the city yeah with great demand yeah whereas these other trees here Ordinary chestnuts. Uh, ordinary chestnuts by comparison. And they're difficult to peel off. Now what happened two years ago, nearly every graph on that tree there mm. succeeded. Mm. But at that stage I hadn't thought to put the bamboo stakes with two staples. Mm -hmm. And what happened, they became very good grafts. We started moving from that place down to here which took 
Would you believe it? It took at least two months for me to move from that bed end. No, I'm not surprised. Because I'm a great hoarder. Um, and every graft on that tree blew off. <laughs> every single one of them. Now, I've done another whole lot of... Shame. Done a whole lot of new grass here, and not one of them has taken on this time round. So that's probably telling me that it's not a genetic thing this time, but it was the wrong time of the year to do it. Yeah, the wrong moon phase probably. Do you know what? I've never, I've heard about it, I've never looked into it with any, but yeah, could well mm, be. Could be. That's a get. Yep. Because growers in northeast Victoria are almost putting in the ground everything they can get hold of. Okay. But we're selling those for $25 each. Right. And had probably a dozen trees to sell. <laughs> and the rest we put in this stage, which is pruning back to four or five trunks. Oh, okay then. There, so are, two, I... there, are, t there are two. We've had a, a doctor. Um, from CSIRO, retired, called John Kinez, mm. who's regarded as a bit of a hazelnut expert. He, with the previous, the previous owners of this property, a dozen, ten years ago, very good, very good friend of mine and his wife, in fact, on this property died of breast cancer. Oh, okay. She was about 43, 43 years old. Um, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here now having this conversation. No, they'd be um, funny. It. John said, there's one or two ways to grow hazelnuts, and they're equally as good. Mm -hmm. This is in ideal terms. You grow a single trunk and let it yeah. bear shape, or you have four or five trunks. Yeah. You'll notice on these trees there are hundreds of trunks, lots of trunks. And with very established trees like this, we then get a lot of Suckers growing around the base. Yes, I've noticed. And we know our males and females. Males, by the way, can be distinguished very hard, except for these two characteristics. The males grow fairly straight-looking branches. Right. Females are quite crooked. Okay. But the uh, female leaves come in to leaf around about a month before the uh, males. Right. And the male nuts are elongated, the female nuts are spherical. Mm -hmm. Big demand for the male nuts. Thank you. Some equipment that's standing in jeopardy at the moment. <laughs> this is a quite big farm shed. Yeah, it's good. I've had the money so far only to concrete a runway through. Yeah. But that's a beastly. These are great machines. I don't know whether you have one, but... Oh, no, these I have are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, this is a, a ride-on mower? No, no, this is um, an ATV, an all-terrain vehicle. Okay. Will be, and I think I'm going to have to sell it. Chestnut harvester. Okay. So sucking up, sucking up hazelnuts, sucking up chestnuts. Oh, okay. Big vacuum machine. And this is a tipping trailer. This trailer here with controls in here. Oh. Uh, battery. will 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 tip. Yep. So we can suck all of our nuts into the trailer and then just tip them out and then then there are two machines which you can get into if you if it's worthwhile doing mm -hmm. it. One's called a dehusker and the other's a uh, air leg separator. Mm -hmm. So one will dehusk the nut and the other will separate the nut from the trash. Right. Yep. And this little beast to here costs us almost twenty thousand oh. dollars. But and this is the uh, this is called a four in one bucket. This uh, opens and closes. Uh -huh. And this, this is a fantastic machine. Yeah. Over here, you might have seen one of these somewhere in your life. I haven't fired it up for probably five years. That's the second World War energy. Uh, I have a 1954 203 Peugeot that I drive normally. Your what? No. Station wagon or saloon? A saloon. Because a friend of mine actually had the station wagon. Oh, we've had station Which wagons too. Had... I'm yeah. a Peugeot nut. Are you? I haven't seen a Peugeot on the property yet. No, you haven't. No, we... But what I've had, my first car was a 403. 
Yes, we had those. I then bought the last model of the 404s with the reverse lights. The first 203s to come into the family were my brother David bought them. I think he got three for $5. It was a bit 30, 40 years I ago. Spoke, I've seen someone again, I think it might have been on, was it on Landline? Some guy who used to do the, participate in the Red X trials, mm. you know, 203s. Yeah, well, they, they just had one. And he owns, I think, 23 203s. Yeah, or 23 Peugeots. These are not fully assembled. Oh, the chestnut roasters, yes. Well, we see we, those in the city, don't we? That's yes. We in the city. So these are the trailers that we carry them. Yeah. And now we have to do a whole lot of modifications to them, we think, if we're going to be successful this year. Right? Otherwise, you'd be selling in another city like Adelaide or... Oh, I don't know what. Do the country round, yeah, yeah since the last time. Another new one. Another and new one. Some big trees fall across the bank of our big town. Is that just lack of water that they're getting? Yes, I think so. That's amazing. We're going to come in. Chainsaws. And they didn't get those because they're all bolted down, but they got something else, some other stuff. Well, this is interesting. This is... This is running. Yeah. Um, but this is one big tree and then another really big tree came down and see it on the bank. Okay. This is real. That's quite a good flow. Yeah. Agreement with the guy next door. And he is obliged to come in and help me clear around the swans of the dam. Oh, well, he'll enjoy so, that. What I haven't done last year and this year is we haven't gotten in and cleaned up all the young gum trees that sprayed up everywhere. Things to learn. Yeah, I know. Does that ring the bell? Oh, well, it's happening so, with my stuff too. Bloody bamboo blocks. Oh, okay. Okay. That goes into a tank and is pumped up to the top tanks. Yeah. And the shed at the top directly feeds into the two tanks. And this is one of the pump houses. This is... It's a big pump. Oh. Bloody hell, they didn't come through here. This is a... Grandpa's make very, very good pumps from, from Denmark. And these are called... These are low energy... It's a soft start variable speed motor pump. Oh, okay. So that they're more, far more expensive to buy. We've got our boots back again this year. But they are, um, over the lifetime of the pump, they're much lower running cost. Mm. We've put in things like elect electronic solenoids to close the pipe off while it's priming up and then... Which is. So, as we get up here, but... Mm -hmm. This can automatically come on. We sent a wire from here up the road to the top. Yeah. So this is a bit of the young hazelnuts starting off. Now. So these are the really young ones. Like they, these are two, maybe three years old. Oh, I see. They would be four or five years old or six oh, years I see. old. I see. Big difference. Yeah. The one there. Oh. And these are normally, in their very early years, they are set on uh, water sprays, sprinklers. Yeah. This bunch of trees here. As long as I can get them in the ground and I don't it, kill it, them, this is it. my real problem. If I don't well, kill them, they will, these, what we do as a matter of course, we prune them back heavily mm -hmm. and we prune the roots. Yeah. If the roots are going out way out here. Yeah. We, we chop them from, with a spade to begin with, but then we cut everything with secateurs. Okay. Um, and we, we, we send out thousand tree orders. So we're, we're sending out commercial serious, serious hazelnut. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm only hobby farm size. Don't, by the way, eat any of the blackberries. That's no. Um, yeah. And we, le we lease the land. Um, an area that we can build igloos on out and all, all the other is to develop it myself bit by bit as I get money in. I'm running out of the it's a geodesic. It's in the hills.
really. So it seems like something that was then Gardenia Reservoir. Right beyond there on a clear day you can actually see the sea. There's French Island. So that's Bass Strait. Yep. Okay. Then you get the landmass of the Mornington Peninsula here. And then that's all of uh, Port Phillip Bay. Right. And from our property over there, you can also see all the views that run through here. The, these are the Walkland Ranges over here. Pretty good.